I'd like to call this meeting of your North City Council order, August 17, 2015. Autumn, please call the roll. Mr. Roletta? Here. Mr. Blake? I'm here. Mr. Bell? Here. What is this? Mr. Cobb? Here. Mrs. Floyd? Here. Mr. Guthrie? Here. Ms. Hall? Here. Mr. Johnson? Here. Mr. Marmy? Here. And Mr. Rapp? Here. We have all here this evening. Next, if you please join me, if you rise for the invocation by Mrs. Floyd, call her by the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you bow your heads, please? Almighty God, we thank you for the opportunity to live in this country where we have a great many freedoms. We ask that as we make sometimes very difficult decisions for this city, that you be with us as we go through our deliberations. We ask you to be with our safety forces, with our men and women in the military around the world. And as school starts this week in Newark, we ask that you be with the students and the teachers and the staff of the schools uh, as they transport our students to school and conduct <coughs> the education that our students need. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Boy, you want to start the pledge for me? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mrs. Floyd. Thank you, William. Next on the agenda this evening, we have caucus. That's the time for anyone on council to discuss anything that they may want to bring up about the agenda this evening. Do we have any? Okay. Next, we have the minutes of our August 3rd, 2015 meeting. Do we have a motion to approve them? Motion. motion by Mr. Raff, second by Mr. Johnson. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those same sign. That passes. Thank you. We have four reports this evening of standing committees. We have one from finance, one from street, one from service, and one from personnel. Without objection, those will be received in file. Uh, we also have two reports from city's officials this evening, one from Stephen Johnson, our auditor, the operating report uh, for the period ending July 31st, 2015, and one from Barb Jobs, the New York City Income Tax Administrator, the Income Tax Revenues Reports ending July 31st, 2015. Without objection, those will be received in file. We have one petition this evening also. It's a petition was received to vacate a portion of an alley on Clinton Street between 301 and 303 Clinton. That will also be received in file. Communications this evening, we have four. We have one from the Ohio Division of Liquor Control, a new prevent request for Kroger store that will be constructed at 1155 North 21st Street. One from Mayor Hall, declared the month of September as Hunger Action Month. One from Paul Moran, a written statement of his comments during the July 20th, 2015 meeting. And a, uh, actually another one from the Ohio D Division of Liquor Control, a transfer permit request for Shannon's Carryout LLC from Wickham's Grocery. Again, without objections, those will be received in file. Next on the agenda this evening, we have comments from citizens. There are two places to comment this evening. Again, this is not a uh, debate with council. This is just a chance for you to come up and give us a brief comment about what's on your mind. If you would like to make a comment, please raise your hand so I can recognize you and come on up. William? I'm William Butcher, 263 Union Street. My caseworker, uh, she uh, asked me uh, a couple days ago, I think it was last Wednesday, she said, no one. My island is going to get repaired. Should I see it tore up and repaved? And I told her that the last one just won't happen. I turned. I told her do not. I do not know. But uh, should I know that's going to happen? She, uh, getting a little bit frustrated. I just told her. I just told her patience. And she like to hear. I like to. She like to hear what the, uh, the street department or the city council. That's uh, it's a uh, response from the New York City Council for that pass. Thank you, William. Anyone else in this first section of citizens' comments? Ma'am? Could you just give us your name and address for the record, please? It's uh, Yvonne Gonzalez, 228 Boylston Avenue, here in Newark. Um, I understand from Ms. Hall that our safety director made a comment <coughs> regarding uh, Boylston Avenue being the way it is for 20 years. That's why it's the way it is, because nobody's doing anything. I've called the Zoning Commission for four months about a camper sitting in the alley somebody is living in at 236 Boylston. No response. I called Mr. Blake and left a message. 
I've got no response. You guys are leaving us no choice but to go to outside sources to get help. We need help. It's ten times worse than it was two weeks ago on our street. The police have been there, I, I can't even tell you, probably 20 times in the last three or four days. Arrested one guy, come and talk to people. I, I mean, it's got to get cleaned up. We have to have help. I've been to Mr. Hall's office on made, in many occasions in the last five years. It's time that we get some help in our neighborhood. I know there's other neighborhoods, and if people is not concerned about their neighborhoods, obviously that's why they're not here. But I am concerned. Um, I was away um, in New York, came back home, and my garage had been broken into. I had to buy alarms. I mean, this is the kind of stuff's going on in the neighborhood. We need help. We need patrols. We need whatever help you can give us. But I've called the Zoning Commission for four months, and I want that trailer moved out of there. There's people living in it and dealing drugs out of it. I've reported it, I've called the inspector, left a message. We're, we, we're just tired of it. We're tired of the nonsense because somebody should be able to do something besides pass the buck and that's what's happening. Thank you, ma'am. It does sound like the police have been there 20 times in the last three or four or five days, at least something is going on there. Well, there's a lot going on, but they don't take anybody to jail. I, they're, uh, talk to them. I can talk to them, but that's how much it does. Good? Thank you. Anyone else? I'm Cheryl Sturgis, and I live at 213 Bulliston Avenue. Now, we have a McDonald's, but on our street, we also have a McDonald's. Drive up, drive through, get your drugs and leave. And um, I'm not sure of the address, but these people, they fight every Friday and Saturday night. And you would think that our city police officers would get tired of that every Friday and Saturday night, two or three times. They're there, constantly. Why don't they just take them to jail, sit away, and move on to something that they really need to do? They're not doing anything about it. They fight every weekend. And they're there. They leave, they come back. They leave, they come back. But something has to be done. I'm sure there's another street like ours, but then people must not care. Or they would be here. They would be trying to do something to clean up their street. We have a lot of little kids, about 50 on our street. And they're just going to grow up and do what their parents do. They're going to make their own drive through so they can sell drugs and get money. They're going to go out and start stealing people's stuff. And that's what's happening. And, and some of the people on our street, they're scared to call the law when something happens to their house. If their house gets broken, they're not going to call out because their thing is, what's the point? They're not going to do anything. So we'll take all the help we can get. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else for this first section of citizens' comments? Okay. We'll move on to... Uh, well, this is on the first reading, 15-22. Ordinance 15-22 by Mr. Marmee, Mrs. Floyd, Mr. Ratt, an ordinance amending the position authorization tables of the City of Newark Division of Fire by creating the position of part-time life safety inspector. 15-22 will be held for a second reading. Next we have 15-24. Ordinance 15-24 by Mr. Cost, Mr. Marmee, Mrs. Floyd, Mr. Ratt, an ordinance vacating a portion of a 16.5 foot wide alley as shown on the plat of the John R. Hughes edition as recorded in plat book 3, page 13 of the Licking County plat records located between properties at 279 and 295 Wilson Street. 15-24 will be held for a second reading. Next we have resolutions on the second reading, 15-68. Resolution 15-68 by Mr. Cost, Mrs. Floyd, Mr. Rapp, Mr. Marmee, a resolution appropriating monies for the current expenses of the Municipal Corporation. You've heard the second reading of 15-68. What is your wish? Uh, motion to adopt. Ms. Hall moves to adopt. Second. Second by Mr. Rapp. Is there any discussion on 15-68? Seeing none, I'll please call the roll to vote. 
Mr. Roletta? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Bub? Yes. Mr. Koss? Yes. Mrs. <coughs> Floyd? Yes. Mr. Guthrie? Yes. Ms. Hall? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Marmy? Yes. And Mr. Rapp? Yes. 15-68 passes 10-0. Next on the second reading, 15-69. Resolution 15-69 by Mr. Blake, Mr. Koss, Mrs. Floyd, Mr. Rapp, Mr. Marmy. A resolution appropriating monies for the current expenses of the municipal corporation. You've heard the second reading of 15-69. What is your wish? Mr. President, Mr. Blake. move to adopt 15-69. Motion adopt by Mr. Blake. Second. second by Mrs. Floyd. Do we have any discussion on 15-69? <clears throat> Seeing none, all please call the roll vote. Mr. Roletta? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Bubb? Yes. Mr. Koss? Yes. Mrs. Floyd? Yes. Mr. Guthrie? Yes. Ms. Hall? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Harmy? Yes. And Mr. Rapp? Yes. 15-69 also passes 10-0. Next on your agenda, we have resolutions on the first reading, 15-71. Resolution 15-71 by Mr. Blake, Mr. Cost, Mr. Marmy, Mrs. Floyd, Mr. Rapp, a resolution appropriating monies for the current expenses of the municipal corporation. 15-71 will be held for a second reading in three weeks. Next, we have 15-72. Resolution 15-72 by Mr. Cost, Mrs. Floyd, Mr. Rapp. This is a resolution to, con uh, to construct sidewalks and related work on Arlington Avenue from State Route 79 North to Heritage Middle School within the City of North. 15-72 will be held for a second reading. Next we have 15-73. Resolution 15-73 by Mr. Blake, Mr. Cost, Mrs. Floyd, Mr. Rapp. This is a resolution appropriating and disappropriating monies for the current expenses of the municipal corporation. 15-73, Mr. Blake. Mr. President, move to waive the two-day reading roll. Motion by Mr. Blake to two, waive the two-day reading roll. <coughs> by Mrs. Floyd, Mr. Blake. Uh, there's some uh, employee payouts and some other expenses that need to get done in a timely manner. Thank you, Mr. Blake. Autumn, please call the roll to waive the two-day reading roll. Mr. Roletta? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Bub? Yes. Mr. Cost? Yes. Mrs. Floyd? Yes. Mr. Guthrie? Yes. Ms. Hall? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Marmy? Yes. And Mr. Rapp? Yes. The two-day reading rule has been waived. Mr. Blake? Uh, Mr. President, move to adopt 1573. Motion to adopt by Mr. Blake. Second. Second by Mrs. Floyd. Do we have any discussion on 15-73? Uh, Mr. President. Mr. Blake? Um, Mr. President, I just want to take a moment, and with your permission, I'll have Director Buzzkirk correct me in my comments. Uh, but there was some... Uh, discussion uh, from committee meeting till tonight about uh, what exactly it is we're doing with the professional services sections of this uh, resolution and I just wanted to make a few comments to make it uh, clear about what it is um, that's happening here um, on July 20th council approved ten thousand uh, dollars for the professional services account at which fifty three hundred dollars was spent and what is left is $4,700, and that's currently uh, focused on a police arbitration that is finished today, uh, or yesterday, in the, in the it's near past. finished, we're waiting on the decision. Okay. And so that's, that's what happened with that 10000 Oh, come to the podium. <laughs> so that's what's happened to that $10,000 from July 20th that we approved. Um, and then now, with this money that is before us now, is that... Um, the $11,000 is going to be spent um, for a captain's test, which is $1,620, an assessment test, which is $4,900, and then for the four new hire, four new firefighters that we are hoping to hire, that's $4,492, which um, that actually totals to $11,512, which is over the $10,000 that Director Buzz Kirk is requesting but he's hoping to get the remainder from a car impound lot that will occur later on in the fall. And so, Sale in November. Okay. And so that's, uh, that's where that, those dollar figures are coming from. And then the uh, remainder request of this is uh, going for just the HR professional service, services account, which goes for the employee assistance services, the drug testing from Ohio Health Consortium, uh, which is some of these things are mandated by law. Um, we have some incidents um, involving officer-involved shootings that, uh, and 
Of course, there were some arbitrations and attorney fees within the remainder $11,000, in which the ASPE arbitration, we are using uh, services from the law director's office with that case, and then uh, there is another police arbitration coming down the road. And so uh, I just wanted, I know there were some email exchanges and some telephone calling going around. I just want to make sure that uh, we get on the same page with that. Did I, did I say that correctly? Yes. Okay. So. Thank you, Mr. Blake. So my question is, my test, stick around. testing now is not under civil services, it's under professional services? It's under civil service. So why are we... Jeremy combined the... Councilman Blake combined the two, when actually there's two different funds there. One is civil service and one is professional service. They both the testing falls under civil service. They both said professional services. So the, the professional what? services under civil services? The 114 account. Well, there's three numbers. It's different. Yeah, councilman, that changes which account it's in. It's 109 and 114. Right. So, so Mr. Busker, which one's which? The one for 10,000 would be civil service. The one for 11,000 is professional services. So the 109 is the civil service. Anything else, Mr. Marley? Yes, I'd like to make a motion to separate out Section 5 and 6. Thanks. <coughs> Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Busker. Thank you. There's a motion by Mr. Marley to separate 5 and 6. <coughs> Is there a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Bob. Any discussion on separating 5 and 6? So we're going to do, let me see if I have this straight. We're going to vote. These are these are five and six, right? Okay. So we're going to vote on uh, the motion. Then we're going to vote on five, and then we're going to vote on six. Is that what you're asking? No. Just put five and six combined into one separate okay. piece. We're going to vote on the motion, and five and six is going to be the second piece. Yes, Thank you. Okay. I'll have to just call the roll vote on dividing this motion to vote. Mr. Roletta. Yes. Mr. Blake. Yes. Mr. Bob? Yes. Mr. Koss? Yes. Mrs. Floyd? Yes. Mr. Guthrie? Yes. Ms. Hall? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Marmy? Yes. And Mr. Rupp? Yes. Okay, so the motion will be divided into those two. Is there any discussion on the motion without five and six? That's what we'll vote on first. Seeing none, Otto, please call the roll of vote. Mr. Roletta? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Bubb? Yes. Mr. Koss? Yes. Mrs. Floyd? Yes. Mr. Guthrie? Yes. Ms. Hall? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Marmy? Yes. And Mr. Rapp? Yes. 1573 without five and six, then passes. Now we will vote on 1573, five and six. Is there any discussion on five and six? Mr. Marmy? Thank you, Mr. President. Again, I'm just going to reiterate um, my main objection to this is that we are pulling funds from the budget stabilization fund. Um, we just can't continue to utilize that. We've got to find other ways in order to fund. Um, I, I would hope that we would do everything possible. We already deficit spent when we initially wrote the budget. Um, we need to stop taking from that fund in order to try to uh, cover expenses within the city. So that's my objection to this. Thank you, Mr. Marmon. Mr. Guthrie? Thanks, uh, Mr. President. I, I, I appreciate where uh, Mr. Marmon is coming from. Um, but at the same time, um, I think that um, the chief has been very sincere about the importance of trying to maintain his accounts as they are to get through the end of the year. Um, uh, you know, I jokingly said something about having a yard sale, and Mr. Rhodes has been doing some of that, and thank goodness that he has because it's, you know, it's helping with some of these costs, or the amount coming out of budget stabilization could actually be higher. Um, so I, I don't know what the alternatives are, and as a result of that, I'm supportive of this. Thank you, Mr. Governor. Anyone else? Okay, Autumn, please call an order vote on 15-73, 5 and 6. Mr. Roletta? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. 
Mr. Bub? Yes. Mr. Cost? Yes. Mrs. Floyd? Yes. Mr. Guthrie? Yes. Ms. Hall? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Marmy? No. And Mr. Rapp? Yes. 15 73, 5 and 6 passes 9 and 1. Thank you. Next we have 15 74. Resolution 15 74 by Mr. Cobb, Mr. Marmy, Mrs. Floyd, Mr. Rapp. A resolution of intent to vacate a portion of a 16.5 foot wide alley running north from West Main Street between properties at 108 and 112 West Main Street. 15 74 will be held for a second reading. And finally, this evening on the first reading and the end of our legislation is 15 75. Resolution 15-75 by Mrs. Floyd, Mr. Marmy, Mr. Rapp, a resolution of intent to vacate a portion of a 12-foot wide alley as shown on the plat of the John McCoons <coughs> addition as recorded in plat book 2 and page 246 of the Licking County plat records located between properties at 301 and 303 Clinton Street. And 15-75 will be held for a second reading. And that concludes our legislation this evening. Thank, thank you for your attention. Next on the agenda, we have our second opportunity for comments from citizens. Do we have anyone who would like to speak? Ma'am? Anna Real, 1293 Granville Road. By now, I hope you are aware that the Licking County Board of Health is going to be visiting our city very soon to begin to invade the homes of our citizens in order to inspect their septic and aeration systems. A friend and I learned of this a few weeks ago. My friend immediately informed her mayor of, of Licking County Health Department plan for carrying out this mission. With that said, she also shared a number of very important pieces of the information to her city council. And um, so she has given me permission to share with you her speech. And I am hoping that by sharing this information with you, you will be better able to defend yourselves and our city from overreaching reg regulations. So here's what she basically said. First, let's look at the big picture. These inspections, one, undermines the local control, two, negatively impacts property rights, and three, will be done in such a way that the citizen is assumed to be guilty of a violation until proven innocent. Not exactly America, is it? Let's start with the loss of local control. This program is being administered by the Licking County Board of Health, an unelected board was written by the Ohio Department, an unelected board, and pushed by the EPA, an unelected federal agency. While, elected, while an elected body such as the city council has no say or control over how it is run, that is some pretty serious loss of local control. Let's talk about negative impact on the property rights. Forget the fact that the Board of Health, with no proof that the citizen septic has a problem, is is going to force themselves onto the citizen's property using the sheriff if necessary. Forget that the health department is going to charge the citizen a fee for this honor. Just think of what it might be like for a senior citizen on a fixed income and hearing that the health department inform you that you must replace your septic or aeration systems. These folks, as many People today do not have a lot of extra cash lying around. And how will they pay for this? And what will, the, what will happen if they can't? Will their homes be condemned? And will they be then put out on the streets? There are about 30,000 septic aeration systems in Licking County alone. Do not think for a, for a minute that this is not going to happen to one or more of our county's citizens. Further, a video is available of a meeting conducted in Geauga County where the very, very knowledgeable head of the Geauga County's Health Department, Robert Weisdack, among others, provides a large amount of information on this very topic. 
Health Administrator Weisdeck points out that the Ohio Department of Health claims that it costs about $8,200 to replace a septic or an aeration system, where in actuality the number is more like fourteen to 25000 It makes one wonder why the board, the Ohio Board of Health, lowballed this figure. As for the wide range between fourteen to twenty-five thousand, as explained in this video, the citizen will most likely not have uh, will most likely not have many, if any. Sorry, if any options on which type of system that they may they must replace their old system with. The septic reg regulations based on a variety of variables like soil types will force the health department to tell the citizen what they can and cannot replace their old systems with. If the regulations say that only the most expensive system can be used, that is what the citizen is strapped with. Further, the video also goes on to say that the regulation in an attempt to create a one-size-fits-all has created a one-size-fits-no-one. Consequently, the video goes on to say that after the citizen shells out a small fortune to install a new system, the system may fail. I can understand if the health department believed that a septic tank system was failing, that they have some obligation to go to work with the citizen to fix the problem. But to cast a net so broad that every single citizen with a septic or aeration system is pulled into this bureaucratic nightmare is just plain wrong. It does, however, make one wonder if there is an effort to try to get people off the rural lands. I would then ask one more question. If a citizen feels a health department has erred in condemning their system, is there a procedure in place to provide recourse for the citizen, or are we working under the assumption that the health department is infallible? God, I hope not. If what you are thinking right now is that this is all about is all out of the control of the city council, then you will be happy to know that I will be using the later citizen comment opportunity to provide you to some ideas on how you can combat this coming wreck, train wreck. Again, I start with the big picture. As time passes, the federal government, through its many agencies, will be asking you to do more and more virtually impossible things and then threaten you with fines for noncompliance. Ask the city administrator if this is not already true. Since the full implementation of the regulations are likely impossible, perhaps it is time to not try to frantically comp comply. I suggest you do what you can, accept that you can't avoid the fine, and above all else, make sure that you do all you can to protect your citizens from the abuse by unelected boards. This might be a really good time to make sure that you have a law director that is fully capable of handling something like this. While I am aware that the Licking County Board of Health has backed up its initial starting date from August 1st to sometime in September or, or October so that the citizen meetings can be provided, it is critical that these meetings, in, meetings meet certain guidelines. First, there should be a significant number of meetings with some scheduled in the evening. Second, these meetings should be widely publicized, not just in the local papers over a number of weeks, but also with the webs and on the radio. Third, this should not be an open house format where the citizens just mill around. It should be held in a large auditorium and every citizen who wishes to speak or ask questions should have that opportunity. If that means the meeting lasts for hours, so be it. Fourth, a handout should be available to all who attend explaining the regs in detail so that the citizens have a full explanation in writing explaining what is being done to them. Lastly, on this handout should be the names and contact information for every person at Licking County Health Department, the names and contact for every person in the Ohio Health Department, and the contact information for their state senator and state representative. <coughs> Why is this last thing so important? The citizens need to be directed to those who are responsible for this mess. Otherwise, they will be calling all of you. Not something I think that you would all want. In Licking County alone, before this is over, there will be 30,000 potentially angry citizens. They can create a lot of pushback, but to do so, they need guidance on where the, these freedom-sucking regulations are coming from. 
One last thing, I do not want the environment destroyed, but I am not willing to destroy the property rights or local government control because somewhere in the city, some of the septic systems need work. And do not doubt me, these regulations are not about the environment. They are part of the transformation of America and America where property rights and local government have no place. Again, thank you for this opportunity. Now, with minor deletions from, uh, that pertain to her city, the above was the full speech, one with which I am in total agreement with. I would like to add the following. Please be aware that her city is now in the process of planning a number of holding three public meetings to address the Board of Health's unconstitutional regulations. I implore you to consider doing the same. And if I, and if need be, I will be happy to inform you of these meetings so that you have the opportunity to attend, which can provide you with a template to hold meetings for the citizens of New York. I thank you very much. Any questions? Thank you. Anyone else for this second section of citizens' comments? Ma'am? Ma'am and then Paul. My name is Kay Kittle. I reside at 48 North 21st Street. I was here two weeks ago to make some comments about a property across from our restaurant at 6 and Wilson. And as far as I can see, nothing has been done. Dee did say she had driven by. The back doors are standing open. The windows are broken out. And it's not a pretty sight down there. And it's pretty hard to run a nice restaurant for families, to bring their kids. And maybe there is a war on Christianity because we're just a small family Christian restaurant. I'm hoping something can be done. And I look around here and there's more city council people than there are citizens. And that's sad. It really is. That's all I have to say. Mr. Moran. Thank you. Uh, continuing with the NERC Problems series, uh, focusing on the Front Street sidewalk at the 16 overpass. And this sidewalk is really not usable. Name and address. Oh, Paul Moran, 63 North 4th Street. Sorry. That's all right. Uh, this sidewalk is just not usable for the general public, and this is also a main entrance into the downtown. So it really doesn't give a good image, especially all these truck drivers are coming in now from other states and places, and they see how we treat our property. I, I, I talked to ODOT today on the phone, and they said this is the city's property to handle and take care of. It's not theirs. So I checked with them before I went into this. Uh, yeah, it is all broken up. It's half covered up with dirt and mud. And when it rains, it comes all muddy, a section of it, because there's no concrete base underneath the freeway bridge. It's just all ground. And so all that mud flushes right onto the sidewalk, which is dry dirt right now on a section of it. Um, you know, we got this renewed Nork thing, and I mean, if we really want to have renewed Nork, let's make some real progress and address all these problems that not only I bring up, but other citizens bring up, uh, which would be a really reasonable thing to do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moran. Anyone else? This lady and then wait. I just have another question. These, um... Give us your name and address again, please. Oh, Cheryl Sturgis, 213 Bulliston Avenue. I just wonder what's up with these things where you cross the street, because right there, one on Cedar Street, to come this way, to go across, it gives you like 20 seconds or something, but when you get halfway through it, the cars are coming this way, that we really can hit you. So we need to do something about them crosswalks, because it doesn't give you enough time to walk across the street, and then some of the streets, you're walking across, but the other traffic keeps on going. They don't even stop or look. <clears throat> Thanks. Thank you. Well, Mr. 
um, when Butcher 263 in the street. If you guys are short of cash, I got a great idea. I think you might, John, I think you might, I think I would, you might like this. How about having a city garage sale? Have anything to get rid of that in the garage? Go ahead, have a garage, city garage sale for the job public. Now, I think it would be a good idea of bringing some more cash in to the city. And I want to see it, want to look at it. It would uh, make good business. You guys have more cash to spend on the city streets, on the city, uh, city streets, bridges. Even uh, some of these alleys around here, my alley, my alley is really in bad shape. My caseworker has been getting me on, getting me on, getting on, uh, she's been getting on to me about that. And that's why I'm not a city council member. But I think we have a, it would be a good idea have a city garage sale down there on the East End. And I think uh, get rid of some old. Uh, uh, old city junk, and like you have garage, these garages nowadays. Me personally, I like old stuff. I'm old fashioned. Where I'm after is the old traffic light, old uh, traffic light, or old emergency light. You got, you got one home, by I'm after a, a traffic light, or a um, parking, uh, parking meter. And that's one thing I'm after. I'm after a parking meter or a cool traffic light or old emergency light from a, a city truck. I'm after an orange one. But I think I think it'd be a good idea to have a city garage sale. I like to have city council's response on it. But I pass. Thank you, William. Anyone from the administration this evening? Our order, Mr. Johnson. I'll pass, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Honorable Law Director Sass. Thank you, Mr. President. I will pass. Thank you, Mr. Sass. Mayor Hall. I will pass, folks. Mr. Below. Thank you, Mr. President. I'll pass as well. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Blake. Uh, Mr. President, thank you. I will call a finance committee meeting for the next date of the committees. Um, and I do want to say, um, I think it was after the last uh, full council meeting, Councilman Guthrie and I did drive down your street and we saw you on your porch uh, to, uh, just to get a feel for Boylston. And then there was a later date at which I went down the street to visit. And uh, you know, you're know you you're absolutely right. I mean, there's, there's an issue going on. There's an issue going on there um, at which um, hopefully we could come together in some fashion to work on. Now, Mrs. Hall, as your ward council person she says that you have a block watch meeting tomorrow is that correct yes so i would you know i you know i remember a time you know, i was still in high school but there was a time in our city where we had neighborhood policing officers you know the east end had one the south one i, I love the south sunny villager was the south end police officer but we had an officer assigned directly to a neighborhood and um, you know, unfortunately, our funding doesn't allow us to have that type of service anymore. But that was, uh, I always will be a big supporter of neighborhood policing in that fashion because you know those officers knew the neighbors, they knew the residents, they knew uh, what was going on in that area. Um, but in lieu of not having paid officers patrolling neighborhoods specifically, you know, these type of efforts like block watches is what um, you know, we need to really empower uh, your neighborhood with. Um, now, I know the two of you have come in the last few meetings, but I'm just curious as to you know, how many people will attend this block watch meeting tomorrow night. Um, I will not be there, but as your ward council person, Mrs. Hall will be there. Um, and I hope you know, the mayor has heard your concerns, so hopefully he or someone from his staff will be able to assist, um, not only with the drug addiction on Boylston, but also with Kay at the restaurant. So um, hopefully that, that will occur. Um, so I just, you know, it, we just got to come together and deal with this. Because um, it's not just on your street. It's not at all. I mean, it's, it's the all. The last time we had a police officer come because of some problems, his suggestion was just to move your business out of this area. Yes. <laughs> we have been there 35 years. It'll be 36 in October. But they say if you don't like the neighborhood, move somewhere else. 
Go ahead, Mr. White. Well, there's, I, I mean, the point being is that we need to come together in some fashion because there's, um, you know, our officers are <coughs> limited, and so we just have to find some creative ways to man this and uh, attack it in a different approach. So, um, but, uh, you know, just look forward to that day when we can do that. That will pass. Thank you, Mr. Blake. Mr. Bob? Thank you, Mr. President. I need to call Ways and Means Committee for two weeks, so the panel pass. Thank you, Mr. Bob. Mr. Cost? I need to call a service committee meeting for the 31st as well. I've also been down in your neighborhood taking a look around to see what was taking place. There, there, there are definitely there are problems. There's no doubt about it. The meeting that uh, Ms. Hall and I had with the safety director and the chief of police and the one other officer uh, I think we got a lot of information that a lot of, I was not aware of, but there, I, I, there definitely are problems. And, and Kay, I, I mean, I, we're very familiar as well there. And uh, there are there are a lot of areas around the city that they're dealing with, and we are there, there aren't enough officers. There's no there's no doubt about it. So uh, it, there are people making efforts. It may not look like that to you, but they're 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 working towards trying to help, and we all are. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Goss. Mrs. Floyd? I just want to announce several upcoming events in Newark, uh, particularly downtown. The last mayor's concert is this Friday um, at, at the gazebo. Um, on August the 28th, uh, the DNA, Downtown Newark Association, will have a cruise in. Uh, downtown is the final Friday for the month of August. And on the very next day, on Saturday, August 29th, uh, is the second annual Bluegrass Festival, which will be in this block out here between 3rd and 4th Street. The street will be blocked off and there will be food trucks and bands, bands from noon till 8 o'clock and then from 8 in the evening on, there are several restaurants downtown that will have music in them, the Sparta and uh, Buckeye Winery and I think Columbo's and the bistro and you know so and I think the draft house so there will be music in all of those venues uh, for people to come and enjoy themselves and and so uh, there are some things on a positive note I know there are some issues we all know that uh, but I just want you to be aware of those are things going on in Newark as well thank you thank you Mr. Floyd Mr. Guthrie um, thank you Mr. President a uh, couple things the uh, uh, Regarding uh, the property uh, on South 6th, um, I, I don't know whether maybe Mr. Spurgeon, uh, Bill, if you could maybe communicate with us regarding um, the, uh, what property maintenance either has done or is doing concerning that property because, I mean, if, if there's doors open and it's a vacated property, it seems like uh, some action uh, could be or should have been taken it. At this stage, so uh, uh, Mr. Spurgeon, if you could maybe communicate with council on that. Um, um, regarding uh, Ms. Reel's comments, I, I just uh, for informational purposes, it would be helpful um, if maybe Roger could communicate with council just to let us know how many dwellings um, or uh, we still have in the city that are on uh, septic um, and well uh, uh, as compared to uh, do you hear me Roger yeah. if you could let us know for instance and I don't know whether this information you have or the health department has how many uh, dwellings we still have in the city that are on septic and well I know of course that we have some but I'm just I, I think council might be interested in knowing what that number is. If that's something you can get for us. Okay. Um, uh, and uh, uh, the last thing, uh, Mr. Chairman, sort of a point of personal privilege, I just wanted to um, say uh, some of you are probably aware, have seen a few signs around town about uh, the Karras has caused uh, 5K this Saturday at uh, 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 Geller Park in Heath. Um, Gary Weimer uh, uh, has worked very hard on that. Uh, uh, Mike Mangus has worked very hard on that, and, and others. And uh, uh, and I just want to uh, say that it's 
uh, turning into a splendid event. People, I don't know much about 5Ks, but the 5Ks that are, uh, runners that are on our uh, committee are saying that it's phenomenal for a first year run to be at over 250 runners so far. And we've got four days of registration yet to go. So uh, it's going to be an exciting event. Uh, again, at Geller Park, uh, Saturday morning, uh, I believe registration starts about 7.30 and the race starts at uh, 9 o'clock. And uh, there have been uh, 40, 40 sponsors that have donated between $100 and $500 a piece. And, uh, and, and every dime of those funds is going to help kids uh, with cancer and their families and uh, to support pediatric cancer research at Nationwide Children's Hospital. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Guthrie. Ms. Hall? Uh, I'll, I'll pass. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hall. Mr. Johnson? I'll pass. Mr. Marmon? Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I guess I will have one question as far as the septic issue. I know that there's been changes in the regulations as far as what it, a septic system now takes um, in order to be in compliance. And I was under the understanding that the majority of properties in the city of Newark don't have the acreage requirements to meet the new standards. So if they're making them replace the system, how are they going to become in compliance is my big question. Uh, because I know that there are some properties that um, are, are undeveloped right now that if they wanted to put a house on there with a septic tank because there's no available system, uh, sewage system available, they don't have enough land. So I was wondering how that's going to work with the um, health department. Um, and then the comment uh, about the property on down on 6th Street, I too uh, drove by there. I did a little bit of research. Um, I did find out, I, I could not find a, a current address for the owner, Wayne Leho um, Jr. Uh, I, I tried to do research. The only thing I could find is where his father passed away in 2011 and he must have inherited the property. And I can find nothing on him. Um, and he inherited the property April 2012. So uh, I've been trying to search still, you know, trying to find any kind of location or phone number. Uh, the only thing I find is that property address. So I don't even know if our um, property maintenance department, if they'll get up in touch with anybody because the only address is that address. It's kind of showing. And finally, uh, Chief, if you have a second after the meeting, I'd like to catch you before you head out. Just a quick second. And with that, I pass. Thank you, Mr. Marmy. And Mr. Rapp. Thank you. Um, other than, I just wanted to make a comment about the septic system issue. That, I don't know what committee that might go through, but it might be nice if we somebody would call a committee meeting and we can at least get a report uh, to get us some, some valid credentialed information on that issue. With that, I will pass. Okay, Mr. Rapp. Mr. will be going to give this report. Yeah, Mr. Ebel's coming, that's right, pretty soon in September. September. Well, Mr. Ebel, we'll, we'll work on that a little bit, Mr. Rapp. The, the County right. Health Director will be coming here in September to give his report, and that might be a good time to get some of your information as well. Just a little bit of uh, bookkeeping notes. There's no meeting next week, which is the 24th. It's a five Monday month. Our next committee meeting will be August 31st here in this room at 5.30. Our next council meeting will be on Tuesday, September 8th, uh, Labor Day being Monday the 7th, uh, 7 o'clock here at, also at this room. Thank you for coming. We appreciate it. We always appreciate your input. Is there a motion to adjourn this evening? Second. Motion by Mr. Goss, second by Mr. Buck. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. We adjourn. Thank you very much. Yeah.